This programming is sponsored by Central Markets Citrus Fest, a celebration of more than 70 varieties of fresh citrus, celebrating heirloom oranges, Texas-grown grapefruit, sumo mandarins, and more through January 23rd. CentralMarket.com. This is the Engines of Our Ingenuity, made possible by the friends of KUHF Houston. Today, a doctor reflects on death and the machinery of sustaining life. The University of Houston's College of Engineering presents this series about the machines that make our civilization run and the people whose ingenuity created them. Sherwin Newland's book, How We Die, sat on my desk for a year. Now I finally read it, and it was a jolt. Newland takes on the most forbidden topic of all. Society lets us talk about politics and sex as long as we're careful, but talk of death remains taboo. Newland is a surgeon and medical historian. His book deals with a primary dilemma. To be a doctor is to fight death, yet death always wins in the end. Doctors armed with spectacular new technologies engage in a combat they cannot ultimately win. It is a situation that becomes more paradoxical all the time. Newland begins by explaining death itself, and it isn't pretty. Death is invariably caused by a lack of oxygen brought on by a hundred different scenarios of system failure. It is seldom a matter of passing gently over the great divide. In a harrowing sequence of chapters, he explains how our bodies fail in heart disease, cancer, AIDS, Alzheimer's disease, and more. For those of us old enough to know that our time is limited, Newland's book is frightening at first, but it grows reassuring as he demystifies death. He takes it out of that place where things go bump in the night. He puts it where it can be seen and understood. He also deals with another seldom-discussed aspect of death. It is that the old usually reach a point where they accept it. Newland quotes Jefferson, who at 71 wrote to John Adams, then 78, Our machines have been running 70 or 80 years, and we must expect here a pivot, there a wheel, now a pinion, next a spring will be giving way. There is a ripeness of time for death when it is reasonable we should drop off and make room for another growth. But Newland's main concern is with doctors and their machines, their compulsion to win the unwinnable fight with death, their frequent inability to talk candidly with patients. He tells of the reflex need to fight for a patient's life long after there's any profit in it for the patient. He tells how he cheated his own brother of the chance to deal with his death by cancer. He offered empty hope instead of joining him in grieving the inevitable end. In a poignant apogee of this remarkable book, Newland quotes the hopeless words doctors tell each other when they fail to level with a patient. I could not take away his hope. Then he adds, Unless we're aware we're dying and know the conditions of our death, we can't share any sort of final consummation with those who love us. Without this consummation, no matter their presence at the hour of passing, we will remain unattended and isolated. Others have certainly raised questions about the technologies of preserving life, but Newland, coming from the very center of those technologies, tells us what every technologist in every field should understand. It is that we cannot let the objective purpose of our machines become ends in themselves. The true purpose of any machine can only be shaped by the people it is meant to serve. I'm John Leanhart at the University of Houston, where we're interested in the way inventive minds work. This programming is sponsored by Trinity University, home to a community of diverse creators, innovators, and scholars driven to lead with energy and empathy. More information at trinity.edu values.